The Fianna are based on Celtic and European traditions. They are known among the Guru as some of the most passionate for the carnal pleasures. They are also known as fierce warriors, wonderful musicians, and keepers of Guru lore. And one of the stories that the Fianna like to tell over and over and over and over again is their origin story. According to their tribal legends, the Fianna were born out of a passionate union between a Galliard and a Danu, and a Danu is a totem of wisdom. There is another origin story of the Fianna that they tend to downplay quite a bit, but other tribes like to talk about it. The other story goes that the Fianna were part of a worm-corrupted peoples known as the Firbolgs. But the Fianna weren't always the unified presence that they are now. They used to be smaller, separate tribes that all worshipped the Stag Totem. In France, there were the Hounds of the Horned One. In the mountains of Europe, there were the Sky Singers. Nightclaws were in the Balkans. And the largest group of these separated tribes were the Fierce Ones. These are what are known as the Fianna today. And they resided in England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. All of the Fianna throughout their history have known to have close ties with Fae. And the Fianna are responsible for identifying the threat of the Fomori, as well as fighting back legions of Fomorians. And just for quick reference, the Fomorians, they also went by a name of Volog. These were a race of giants that the Fianna fought and pushed back into the Umbra. It wasn't until the rise of Rome that the Fianna tribes truly became unified. This unification, combined with the fact that the Fianna have never lost their homeland, they still very much control Ireland, this is how they became known collectively as the Fianna to the Guru Nation. The Fianna can be condensed down into three attributes that they believe to be very important and the makeup for their entire tribe. Hospitality, generosity, and bravery. It's these three traits that they believe sets them apart from the rest of the Guru nation. It's also because of these beliefs, they view that any form of deformity is a representation of an unclean spirit. This is why the Fianna actively shun the Métis or any member of their tribe who is wounded in battle and can't be healed, can't be repaired, they view this as a failing on the, on the Fianna's part. It's in this belief that they push away others who don't look like them or who are just different. Before we move on to what a Fianna is like, if you are enjoying the video today, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell notification. Now, if you do like stories and fiction, I do have a 30 day free trial of Audible Plus if you use my link in the description below. When it comes to werewolves, the Fianna are absolutely the most extroverted when it comes to werewolf tribes. These guys rarely turn down an invitation to party, and their tribe actively encourages creativity through whatever their skill set is theater, drama, music, art. And the Fianna are also hopeless romantics. They fall in love with humans and Guru alike, which is a bit ironic because in 4th edition, or the 20th anniversary edition, when werewolves populate, this is how Métis get formed, and they really don't like them. Now when it comes to Fianna tribal structure, any sept is under the leadership of a Rai, and the Rai takes advice from his advisors, which are called the Council of Song and it's usually full of Galliards and Theurges. This hierarchy is the same through any of the Fianna Septs, all the way up to the biggest one at Terra. Now the Terra Sept is led by Ard Rai. This is the top of the list. The Ard Rai is the leader of the entire Fianna tribe. However, their claim to power, it only really works with inside the hierarchy in Ireland. It's not recognized anywhere else. Now, what happens if the Rai falls in battle? There is actually a system in place should one of the leaders of the Seps die. Once approved by the Council of Song, a Teneste, I'm, I'm probably killing all of these pronunciations if you haven't figured that out already, a Teneste is selected and it's usually a leader of a smaller Sept or a Rai of a smaller Sept. So if a tribe is in wartime, for example, and their leader dies, then there is still someone in place to take up the reins of power. 
Another important part of Fianna tribal culture is a system known as fostering. Young children, cubs, pups, they get put under the leadership or guidance of an older Fianna. Usually it's a blood relative, and it becomes the older Fianna's job to teach the child how to act in Guru society, as well as everything they know. The Fianna have also had a very interesting history when it comes to some of the other tribes. In early times when they had discovered the White Howlers, there was a difficult initial meeting period that happened here, but when the White Howlers threw themselves at the worm and were lost completely, this affected the Fianna quite heavily and they mourned the loss of their brothers and sisters, the White Howlers. They'd had a strained alliance with the Geta Fenris up until this point, but the Get, once they saw that the Fianna were weakened because their White Howler allies were gone, they tried to lay claim to Ireland, and this led to a very bloody and long drawn out war that lasted for about 500 years. Through all of that time, the Fenrir were never able to claim a single Cairn in Ireland. This was in large part due to the Fianna's ferocity in combat, but at the end of this 500 year war, the Fianna signed a treaty with the Silver Fangs. The agreement was the Silver Fangs would never try to claim a Cairn in Ireland, and the Fianna would accept the sovereignty of the Silver Fangs and the Fianna would accept the sovereignty of House Winter Snow from the Silver Fangs. Once this alliance was in place, it was impossible for the Fenrir to get through, and they kind of gave up. Around the 14th century, the Fianna were also helping the Fae escape the physical world. Humanity's presence was growing, and the magic keeping the Fae alive was weakening, and the Fae all fled through a gateway to Arcadia. The Fianna aided this mass exodus of the Fae, and while the Fianna were helping the Fae escape, Terra came under attack. English troops had occupied the area, they were launching an assault, and they were taking the kinfolk of the Fianna back to England. The Fianna managed to defend Terra, but their ally, the House of Winter, suffered a massive blow at the hands of the Black Spiral Dancers. The English troops were taking the Fianna kinfolk to an area known as Canacht, and the group of Silver Fangs that they had formed an alliance with, the House of Winter Snow, they suffered a massive defeat at the hands of the Black Spiral. It basically wiped them out. After this happened, the Fianna went and got their kinfolk and returned to England, and they started taking Karens of their own. This trend of taking Cairns continued, even when the Fianna emigrated into the United States during the Potato Famine, they started taking unprotected Cairns from the Pure Ones, and this obviously strained relations with those tribes, and they are still strained even to this day. In my next video about the Fianna, we're going to talk about their holidays, the Septs, as well as the Camps. So once that's done, that will be on your screen, please feel free to click that. Thank you to every single one of my patrons. Your support is greatly appreciated. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.